In this video, we're going to discuss what would happen to your area if a nuclear weapon were to get dropped. Let's get started. One of the scariest topics in the world of emergency preparedness is nuclear war. Hopefully that never happens in our lifetimes, but it is definitely a fascinating topic that a lot of preppers take preparedness measures for. The other day I was going through TikTok videos and found an interesting one by Setup Spawn for a series that he has called Powerful Websites That You Should Know. In one particular video he says, here's how you could find out what will happen if a nuclear weapon were to get dropped near you. So in that video by Setup Spawn, he provides a link to Outrider.org, which has a website that provides you what would happen in your particular area if a nuclear weapon were to go off. And it provides a few different nuclear weapon sizes. Link in the description box. So when you go to Outrider.org, it provides some information for various catastrophes, one of those being nuclear war. So just scroll down to nuclear weapons and select it. When you go to that particular page, it provides various information on solutions, impacts, politics, costs and risks, and history. However, the best part is an interactive section that says what happens in a bomb blast. Just click that section. From that page, it has a section that says experience the power of a nuclear blast in your area where you can enter your location and then it would show what the blast would do. So let's do a quick demonstration of that now. I'm going to put in Seattle, Washington. So it's going to use this location to show what would happen if a bomb were to go off in Seattle. So as you can see on the left over here, it shows the fatalities at over 170,000 with injuries to 114,000 people. Again, this is all really horrific stuff. At the top of the website, it shows the location. You could change it to whatever location you want. You could also select the bomb type, and then you could also select the blast type, whether that be a surface or air burst. Surface means the detonation happens at the ground level. Bunkers below ground are impacted and radiation fallout is greater. For air burst, that's when detonation happens in the air. A larger geographic area is impacted by the blast. At the right, it has four different categories for the tiers shown in the graphic. Fireball, heat, shockwave, and radiation. Let's start off first with Fireball. When you select Fireball, it's going to provide more information with regard to what the Fireball means. It states, this circle shows the maximum radius of the Fireball. In a fission bomb, the Fireball burns 10,000 times hotter than the surface of the sun and is hot enough to ignite fusion reaction in a hydrogen bomb. Basically, anything or anyone inside of the Fireball would be vaporized in an instant. When you look at the map, that's basically downtown Seattle. The largest circle is for heat. So it shows the explosion produces intense heat that causes catastrophic damage. Anyone within this radius would have severe or fatal third degree burns. You could scroll out a little bit on the map to see just how impacting the radius would be. For this particular bomb type, the W87, you could see that that heat radius goes all the way to West Seattle, to Georgetown, Rainier Valley, Wallingford, and the Magnolia area. So anyone within this particular region would have third degree burns. The next category is shockwave. It's a little smaller than the heat radius. This section states, as the fireball quickly expands, it forces back the surrounding air, creating a shock wave. The point where the ambient air pressure jumps is called the shock front, an invisible destructive force moving out from the center of the blast. At this radius, the pressure of the shock wave is strong enough to destroy most buildings except for those that are reinforced. Hurricane force winds accompany the shock wave, adding to the destruction. While the human body could survive a significant pressure jump and high winds, anyone in this area is likely to be injured or killed by collapsing structures or by wind blown debris. And then the final category is radiation. In this section it states, shortly after detonation, the nuclear materials emit a burst of radiation in the form of gamma rays and neutrons. These particles damage the human body at a cellular level. Absorbing too many in a short period results in acute radiation poisoning. It also provides more information on fallout and the mushroom cloud that gets formed. As you can see in this graphic, if the warhead were to be dropped in downtown Seattle, the radiation would impact Belltown, First Hill, and a lot of the stadium district within five and a half square miles. So you could scroll out from the map and see the wider impact of the blast. Again, the bomb type that was selected here was W87. The W87 is an American nuclear missile warhead formerly deployed on the LGM 118A Peacekeeper. When you select the drop down menu, it shows the yield of this particular warhead. You could select smaller warheads like the North Korean H bomb or the Little Boy, which is the first bomb used in war. However, you could also select the largest bomb ever detonated, which has a 50,000 kiloton yield, which was tested by the USSR back in 1961. Let's select that one now and see what would happen to Seattle. As you can see, the total radius is just devastating to the area, especially that heat radius. The fireball itself would impact around 44 square miles. The shockwave would impact 345 square miles, even going across the sound to Bremerton and going towards the South Center area and also impacting Bellevue. And then the heat wave is just absolutely horrible. At 3,200 square miles, it would impact Tacoma, Everett, Bremerton, and more. So I've provided a link in the description box below if you wanna see what the blast would be like in your particular area. For example, since I live in Washington State, we have a military base over at Fort Lewis. So if I type in Fort Lewis into the location box, I'd be able to see what would happen if a bomber were to detonate over there, which might be something more likely in times of war. 
As you can see, if the largest detonated warhead in 1961 were to be dropped at Fort Lewis, it would impact Olympia, Tacoma, the town of Lakewood, Washington would basically be vaporized, and the heat blast would impact 3,200 square miles. So again, this is just absolutely devastating, horrible stuff. While this is all very scary stuff, it's also pretty fascinating, and it's interesting to learn about what the impact would be in your particular region. I've never seen a website like this before, and I found it very interesting. So again, I provided a link in the description box. So if you get a chance, just click the link in the description box below, and you could put in your particular area and see what the blast radius would be like for various bomb sizes. For those hardcore preppers out there that have their underground bunkers in a secret location, this would be a good website to look at just to get a better gauge of your survivability in an impacted area. That's going to do it for this video featuring what would happen if a new nuclear weapon were to be detonated in your area. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. Leave your comments below in the comment section and stay tuned for more emergency preparedness videos. See you next time.